Welcome, friends, to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of New Lenox. We offer these devotions as a way to center ourselves and focus on the divine mystery which we call God. You are welcome to join us, regardless of church membership, your personal belief system, your doubts, or the questions you may have. Our prayer is that we will grow in love of God and love of neighbor through this time together. Now let us center ourselves. Take a deep breath in and let all the worries and stressors of today leave. If only for a moment, breathe in deeply as we now stand on holy ground. Hear the affirmation in the petition. For I know that my Redeemer lives and that at last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has thus been destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall be whole and not another. Job 19, 25-27 Hold us up that we may be safe and have regard for your statutes continually. Psalm 119, 117. Our theme this week has been denying our mortality. Are we denying our mortality? And we have another reading from Absolute Truths by Susan Howatch. We die. Indeed, we have to die in order to be resurrected, restored, and renewed. We die, and we die, and we die in this life. Not only physically, within seven years, every cell of our body is renewed. But emotionally and spiritually, as changes seize us by the scruff of the neck and drag us forward into another life, we are not here simply to exist. We are here in order to become. It is the essence of the creative process. It is in the deepest nature of things. God bless the reading today. What a what a wonderful um, affirmation here. We do not live merely to exist. We live to thrive, to become, to become closer together closer to God, to partner with God in creating good things, which will then also become. And what a wonderful way to live and to be. This is not some trial, period, testing out things. This is an opportunity, each of our lives, to truly live. To live into hope and peace and love. Live into joy. Right now, don't wait until you die finally, physically. Because you can have new life today. Our psalm reading is Psalm 84. I think we're going to read it in its entirety. How lovely is your dwelling place. Lord of heavenly forces, my very being longs, even yearns for my Lord's courtyards. My heart and my body will rejoice out loud to the living God. Yes, the sparrow too has found its home there. The swallow has found her nest where she can lay her young beside your altars. Lord of heavenly forces, my God, my King, those who live in your house are truly happy. They praise you continuously. Those who put their strength in you are truly happy. Pilgrimages in their hearts. As they pass through the Baca Valley, they make it a spring of water. Yes, the early rain covers it with blessings. They go from strength to strength until they see the supreme God in Zion. Lord God of heavenly forces, hear my prayer. Listen closely, Jacob's God. Look at our shield, God. Pay close attention to the face of your anointed one. Better is a single day in your courtyards than a thousand anywhere else. 
I would prefer to stand outside the entrance of my God's house than live comfortably in the tents of the wicked. The Lord is a sun and shield. God is favor and glory. The Lord gives, doesn't withhold good things to those who walk with integrity. Lord of heavenly forces, those who trust in you are truly happy. God bless the reading of the psalm. I love this psalm. Better is one day in your court. Better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere. Do you truly believe that? That life, living with God, is better than anything else. And if you believe that life here, when it ends, leads to life with God fully, then what is everything you're doing here on earth for? Is it preparing yourself for that reality and living into it today? Or is it distraction, beguilement, being bullied off the path? You may choose today whom you serve. Me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As we enter our time of prayer today, friends, I offer you a chance to intercess on behalf of others. Pray for those closest to you, those who lead you to God, those in positions of power, those who are struggling, weak, needing of healing, strength, and pray for yourself. Offer intercessory prayers, prayers for others at this time, knowing that God can work through your prayers, and knowing that prayer can move you to action. So lift up names, lift up situations, lift up our world and its leaders, but also listen so that you may hear how God is calling you to respond to those prayers. We pray as Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I send you forth with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul, but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.